pretty we shiny don't know who's stuff. done it we don't know who's bought it no we don't not yet exactly you've, you've got to be pretty brave to it's buy it it's not me right? <laughs> no <laughs> it's not me either <laughs> spray paint mine gold uh, rising inflation and slowing growth is putting india's economy under pressure that's despite a recent pickup in the country's stock market and a halt in the decline of the rupee as well our next guest says that the country needs to restore the confidence of foreign investors and boost its food production as well alpesh patel principal from profinium group he's with us here in the studio hi alpesh hi. welcome Thank you. um a, a lot going on with india at the moment it's uh, it's, it's fascinating to see we have a new central bank governor we have the, uh, the his first meeting in that yeah. position this week we've got inflation skyrocketing I mean when you look at food prices up by almost 20% this last month yeah. general inflation higher more than 6% you've got the rupee all over the place I mean it's recovered a bit yeah how am I supposed works. to think about uh, India at the moment? and also you've, you've left out that the uh, the uh, main opposition party has just announced who they want as their prime ministerial candidate for the upcoming elections as well so uh, political turmoil which impacts uh, the economy. I think with India the story has always been, if you're looking at a three to five year outlook yeah. uh, on a rolling cycle, you're always fine. If you're trying to time it from a six month to 12 month perspective, you're going to hear lots of stories about growth and how it's, it's bounding up the economic tables, but you're going to end up in the short term always disappointed uh, for the simple reason that you do have problems of inflation. You have those, those um, growing problems that any economy which is emerging like this has. And of course, growth has fallen from around the 9% target a couple of years ago down to just below 5% actually mm. now and that, that's hurting uh, that's hurting the corporate sector but as you say what's hurting the mass population I just got back from there yeah. last week yeah. what's hurting the people um, in the villages and, and it's the villages that I was visiting uh, in places like the Punjab uh, what's hurting them is food inflation uh, mm. as you rightly say and, and that's where India lives in its villages not in its big cities so so what does the what does the government and what what do central bankers do now I mean they can't they can't raise rates uh, because the growth is, is yeah. so shallow. So how, you know, how do you With, how with do a country like it? India, you can't just use the conventional policies that we're used to in, in the West, partly because um, the lack of infrastructure means that simply raising interest rates uh, won't really impact people in the villages who are impacted. You know, the 800 million who live in those villages uh, of the 1.2 billion, uh, because what, what it will do is uh, won't touch them at all. They don't have mortgages. They, don't, they can't increase their savings rates. Uh, for, and food is inelastic. You're going to have to eat. Mm. And they, so what the government needs to do is more supply side solutions. They need to make production of food more efficient. They need to reduce wastage of food. And thereby, they can reduce the subsidies which they're providing for food and for energy. Uh, and by reducing those subsidies, they reduce the budget deficit as well. They really need to focus on the supply side. And in, raising interest rates is very much uh, a demand side uh, uh, solution to a problem which isn't demand led. That's not what's causing food prices to rise. To what extent uh, are the people in India, the economists and so forth, blaming the Fed for this? Saying you're creating an inflationary bubble here, you're sort of oblivious and pretending that there's no implication. I mean, they almost say there's no implication of what we do in emerging markets. Is there a sense of blame? Is there a sense of thinking they're responsible? The funny thing about Indian politics and actually Indian economics, it tends to be incredibly insular. Uh, uh, and so the blame tends to be very domestic. Uh, so whilst you're right to say the tapering from the Fed has what's impacted, uh, the rupee. In actual fact, the blame uh, game that's going on is that there's a lack of confidence in the government, there's uh, a budget deficit, albeit it's only under 5% of GDP, so it's not monumental by any means. There's a current account deficit, which to some extent isn't the fault of the government because it's been the demand for gold. Uh, we Indians are obsessed with gold, and as we've imported that, that's impacted the current account deficit. Uh, and also the oil, the demand for oil. Uh, and so what, what's been blamed is actually the lack of confidence in the present government. And, and everybody I speak to, from the farmers to the economists, they've now got to a stage, which you have in many democracies, which is they just want to change. Mm. Uh, and they feel that that will reinvigorate. There's nothing wrong with people knowing what to do. It's actually the energy and the vitality with which and the confidence that mm. comes from doing it with a gusto. And it, mm. and it feels like a new government would bring that. Yes. Is, is India buy now, given that we, that we have seen you know, pullback, especially in the rupee, for an example? And, and what's, the, what's the horizon, what's the investment horizon? I think with India, it's a classic buy on dip story, because you know which way the trajectory of the country has been going for about the last 10 decades, uh, and actually 20, uh, sorry, last 10 years, and, and 20 years since liberalization. So it's a buy on dip story, but you buy it for three to five year horizons. If you're trying to, to, to pick the right moment for the next six months or 12 months, you're just always going to get your fingers burnt. 
government. And that's what constantly happens, which is one of the reasons why the short-term uh, capital inflows have, have had their fingers burnt, the short-term investors into India, whereas the longer term, the venture capitalists and the private equity groups who've held on for five to seven year horizons have always done well because over that you iron out those ups and downs which you're necessarily going to get. So with India it's buy on dips and buy for the longer term, uh, but you're being too much of a speculator if you're buying just for a six to twelve month horizon. Alpesh, thank you very much. We'll get you back in again to talk about some of your UK stock sure. picks. I know that you have as well. Uh, we'll do that another time. Alpesh Patel, principal from Profinian Group. Uh, coming up here on Closing Bell, we've just been focusing on India a second ago. Uh, what about the rest of the emerging market space? Our next guest is warning of renewed concerns for.